There are billions of women passing through similar experiences all around the world, and for whatever reason, we often feel like we're alone. It's time to make a point of discussing these topics from a range of viewpoints. These conversations surpass age, race, location. They are relevant to women everywhere. Welcome to the She Word. Conversations that women rarely have, but really should. What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works, in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Welcome to The She Word, conversations that women rarely have but really should. And in this conversation, we're looking at women in the arts. Now, it's often suggested that the arts in Malta are not particularly taken seriously, especially in comparison to our European neighbours. Statistics Ray 2021 Times of Malta survey suggests that the arts had taken a knock even before COVID came along and took a serious swipe at performers and artists. But a 2023 survey does look brighter and better. And I'm thrilled to be joined by three amazing women who have a passion for their place in the art scene in Malta. Ira Losco, one guest who really needs no introduction whatsoever. You've headlined Malta's music scene since 2002's Eurovision, where the 21-year-old era took Malta to the second place in our nation's favourite competition. <laughs> Career woman, wife and mum, Ira remains Malta's most commanding artist. Ira, thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Izzy Warrington, an accomplished actress in the musical theatre, dramatic stage productions, and more recently on screen with women of the St. George Cross Island, of course. But you're also an outstanding painter and artist. So thank you as well, Izzy, for being with us Pleasure. today. Thank you. And Tez Saliba, another of Malta's outstanding actresses alongside a variety of genres. Tez launched the limelight as a lead in a long-running television drama, Il Clicker, where you played a bit of a feisty young lady. <laughs> and since then, you've kept us entertained ever since. Now, you're also an outstanding singer and recently sang at my wedding. I did. <laughs> With rather a lot of emotion. Oh my, a lot of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for being on this show. I'm so excited to be sitting down with three powerhouse women from the art scene in Malta. Now, this is a discussion and I'm fairly certain that I'm not going to have to say too much, judging by the conversation before we started this show. <laughs> but I really do want to start with one question that I don't think I've ever asked any of you. And I've interviewed each one of you. Ira, you were one of the first interviews I ever did in 2014. Really? Yes. Okay. Way back when, when I was new to On TV, to right? Ha on TV. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. You remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was you know, thinner then. Um, <laughs> you I good, dreamt, <laughs> as a little girl, I dreamt of being an actress. It was all I wanted to do. I was also quite convinced that Harrison Ford was going to fall in love with me. So <laughs> as we can all assume, not all of our teen, our, our young dreams come true. But I want to ask each of you, was this what you wanted to do when you were a little girl? Let's start with you, Eric. Did you always, as your little girl, did you dream about being a singer-songwriter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was obsessed. Mm -hmm. I used to watch, at the time, Madonna was like ruling the world and I was obsessed with her. I thought she had it all, you know, I thought she was like this, well, she was never the greatest vocalist, but she was the performer and I loved her songs. I think it's the songs that always were like an obsession for me rather than the artist or the performance it was the songs you know the songs would translate and um uh, like the power of a pop song the power of staying in someone's mind of conjuring memories you know of anything and i was obsessed with wanting to be on stage wanting to sing and wanting to songwrite so this is a dream come true because you are kind of malta's madonna <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> 
I wouldn't say no, 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 no. (laughs) If I had to compare myself to anyone, I don't think it would be Madonna. But um, no, I mean, uh, yes, I, I, I am living that dream. Maybe not as I had envisaged it at this point in my life. Um, uh, but uh, well, we'll delve into that later. Yeah, because that's a whole right? other question, right? Because uh-huh. that, that's something we're going to touch yes, on. But yes, yes, I I think I I managed to succeed at my dream, but I have other dreams, of course, as well within my musical journey, which I would still like to achieve. Okay, we're going to come to that as well. Definitely, <laughs> we're going to come to that as well. Um, Izzy, did you dream of being an actress when you were a girl? Did you dream of Harrison Ford? No, I didn't dream about him. <laughs> nope. I watched his movies, but I didn't dream about him. No. But I I think I probably did, but it wasn't conscious. Um I I was I was a very weird kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're really surprised. <laughs> I was weird, right? And I was very shy. So I kind of needed alter egos. Um, you know, so I used to basically spend my evenings before I'd have my bath, you know, in the evening before I uh, to go to, how, how old are we talking to school about the here? next day when I was a teenager. Okay, fair enough. You know, I, I used to be like miming in front of the mirror in the bathroom. <laughs> Obviously miming because I didn't want anybody to hear me. <laughs> I didn't want my siblings. So I would be kind of conjuring up all these different characters that just came out of my head, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I'm weird. I completely, you know, like I'm weird and I'm still weird, probably weirder than I was then, you know? So yeah, so for me, acting is, it's in a, in a way, it's it's a form of liberation because I get to be other characters. I get mm-hmm. to, to experience other characters for that short period of time. Okay, not in, not quite reality, but mm-hmm. for, you know, I can kind of delve a little bit into their, into another character for mm-hmm. a while. And I love that. That's, that's something I really, really enjoy, you know. Mm. So this is also for you a dream that came true. In a way, yes, it is. Yes, okay. I would say so. Cool, cool. So we've got two success stories so far. <laughs> uh, Tez, did you dream about being an actress when you were a little girl? Um, I dreamt of being on stage, of well, I struggled a bit to fit in. So when I was at school, I don't know if it was the same for you guys, but I wasn't I academically. Weirdo over there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't. Donna. <laughs> but... <laughs> I do have one of those comb bras at home. Oh my I'm God. joking. <laughs> Should have brought it. Uh, you going down Vogue. I was doing the whole like a virgin, you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyway, carry on. Um, so I wasn't. I wasn't very academically bright I would say um but then when we had school prize days and things like that I was always very interested and very eager and it was a place that finally instead of being you know on the mm. book and I was like oh yeah I'm actually really good at this and mm. uh, teachers would you know encourage me and this and that and um uh, my mom struck a deal with me she told me if you pass <laughs> your maths mock your, your mid-yearly I will send you to theater school so I got a 50 <laughs> and she sent me and the rest I suppose as they say is history but um, then I was like okay I just need to pass O levels A levels get to university do theatre studies and do something to do with theatre I don't know how I managed because I was honestly I mean even I, I'm a teacher now by profession and I teach drama and this is something that I, I often tell my boys that um grades aren't the most important Mm. thing and drive and passion really Mm. do play a massive factor and then by the time I got to university there was a program on television called the Sfida that was hosted by Claudette Patch and I had entered and the prize was a scholarship to the UK so I had taken it really seriously and I had done really really well and my career so to speak gained a bit of momentum then earlier you mentioned Klicka um, and then kind of things happened from there um, because I had done I went to theatre school I did a basis of all three I had done about six years of just dance and then when I moved to theatre school I did singing acting and dancing and that is how my blend of musical theatre kind of happened and how you mentioned earlier a variety of genres because I'm not limited to musical theatre recently I just did a play and I sing at weddings and um Thankfully, the experience and that I've gained and I hope to gain further allows me to 
uh, adjust my skills and use them wherever I need to. Like we did radio together. These are all skills that you use in, in, in a, variety, a variety of genres that are creative. So answer to that is yes, your dream came true. Yes, the Thank dream of, of fitting in somewhere, I would say. And, and it was always the arts and I wanted to do something as a full-time profession that had to do with the arts and I feel I thankfully managed mm. so it's just me at the table that didn't get their dream to come true <laughs> Why, Harrison Ford? Ah, yeah, no Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and no actress <laughs> oh well <laughs> so I'm going to come around the table again because you just mentioned there Eri mm -hmm. you mentioned there's things that you still want to do in your career now mm -hmm. before we come to that mm -hmm. I want to ask you and I'm going to ask each of you what is the highlight what was the biggest moment of your career to date that moment where you were like oh my word this was my dream and now I'm here um I think the first time it happened was when I was headline not headlining no sorry when I was um in the first edition of uh, Isle of MTV in Malta not because it was MTV or anything like that. It was only because it was on at the granaries, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember I was very, very nervous about it. And every time they said, and very soon there's going to be Ira Loska. Like, ah. It was the first time. It was time. one of them, by the way, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> screaming! <laughs> it was the first time I had heard people have that reaction, you know? I mean, okay, when I came back from Eurovision, it was like quite a, a whirlwind of emotions, but... I kind of felt like Eurovision was a big thing for Malta, but it wasn't a big thing for me. I never really was obsessed with the with the contest. I liked it when I was a child, but it was like, yeah, and I'm gonna my popcorn, you know, and like let's just sit around and watch it and yeah, Malta, you know, <laughs> and watching us like go up the scoreboard. But that was like I was like, ah, Lalo, this is really nice, you know. Like I I came back and people are there supporting me, but. But the time at the granaries, it was like, okay, people know my songs, the songs I've co-written with, with Howard at the time. And they're actually excited, like, to, to watch someone from Malta. Now, you just mentioned that as well. What is that moment like? Because I just saw Passenger mm -hmm. uh, supporting George Ezra mm -hmm. over in Prague. Mm -hmm. And Passenger was one guy with one guitar. Mm -hmm. And there must have been, I don't know, 15, 20,000 people there singing his song. Mm -hmm. And he just stopped and he came back to the mic. He let the, he let the audience sing. Mm -hmm. He came back to the mic and he could hear it in his voice. He was choked up. Mm -hmm. And he must have done this hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. But what's that moment like when someone's singing your song? Yeah, I know. It's amazing because you you feel that you've touched so many people, you know, that they can relate, that whatever you're singing or what you're writing about, people have experienced, you know? We're going to come back to the reality of the next day. Oh, after yeah. you have that in a minute. We're going to come back to that in just okay. a second. Because <laughs> I want to ask you, Izzy, you've just been uh, in misery, looking spectacularly <laughs> awful. <laughs> And did a great job. And, and prior to this conversation, She's a great pleasure in saying I know, that. I, know. I take it as a compliment. You look <laughs> bloody awful, woman. You look terrible. In the okay. best way possible. <laughs> exactly. But you mentioned that that was one thing you'd always want to do. But if you had to define the highlight of your career to date, what would that be? That's a really difficult question. I because, don't make it easy. Because. I don't know if I've had one major highlight that I can pinpoint and say, hmm. maybe after this interview, it might actually, you know, you, you mean come this into is my the head sort oh, okay. of thing. <laughs> have a light bulb moment. Um, because, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. The <clears> thing <throat> is, with theatre, it's very different because, um, for example, ERA's sort of um, audience is much more widespread than a theater audience. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. reach many more people than mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Mine is quite niche, so to speak. You don't have, I mean, a very tiny, tiny, minuscule percentage of the population will come to watch a production that I'm doing because we don't have, you know, theater is not widely frequented in Malta, mm -hmm. even less um, English speaking, you know, in mm -hmm. English theatre is not very widely um, followed here. 
So um, in terms of popularity, I don't think, you know, there, there was one thing where I can say, oh my God, this was the highlight for me. I think I, I, I feel extremely lucky to have portrayed many, many, many different characters and diverse characters from, you know, a very sophisticated or sassy sort of character to, you know, Annie Wilkes, which I just played now, who was a, a, a psycho, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really pinpoint one particular highlight. I have fantastic memories of, of most of the shows that I've been in. Um, and I loved each and every one, but I can't say I loved one more than I loved the other. That's, that is... If it, it does come back to you, if you have that light bulb moment <laughs> in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, don't contact me. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but if it comes back to you, let me know. Tez, <laughs> apart from singing at my wedding, what, <laughs> what was the highlight? That's what? true. Just move on. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Anybody um, who doesn't know, you you actually couldn't finish the song. No, no. You broke down. But I, obviously, we are very good friends. And I know you guys starting out and to see you guys getting married was just beautiful. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> apart from that being the highlight of your career, what would you um, say? Did you are you like Izzy? Did you have you just enjoyed all of it, or you like like era where you had one moment that you're like, oh, yeah. I I don't I don't feel I've done enough yet, and I would eventually like to delve. I, I don't know what you're going to ask, but I do <laughs> like to comment about this about the theater scene and opportunities in Malta. I but before that. that because because there are many things that are produced here that I say largely love to be in on that and I can't because I wouldn't have been selected through the audition process or they don't open auditions and so I can't audition to try. I never received the call, you mm. know, and I didn't get cast. I didn't get handpicked. So unfortunately, there are many of those, but let's leave that aside. So far, I think the highlight, because of a little someone over here, so I I grew up as most most kids I suppose in Christmas time he goes to Panto yes and I did not grow up um, enjoying watching the damsel in distress or so ever so I never looked at the principal girl and say oh my god I want to be here her I grew up looking at the villain especially if she was female uh -huh. and saying I want to be it's, her she was the best. And I grew up watching Izzy I loved as so the much. villain. Bell. And you can't not. So you can't not. She was she exceptional. She was amazing. So I grew up watching Izzy. Whenever there was a female. So most of the time, sadly, it's a male villain. Hmm. Sadly. But sometimes it was female and Izzy dominated that scene. Totally. So I grew up obsessing <laughs> over the female villain. Hey, I'm getting this current, this this recurring theme <laughs> from Izzy. Oh, this weirdo! <laughs> that's me, babe. That's me. I'm now getting nervous. <laughs> anyway, um, and then and then Maleficent, the movie came out, so there was a little bit of hype around her as well, and. Um, a couple of years ago, they produced Sleeping Beauty and they opened auditions for the female visit. Vi visit. They opened auditions for the female villain. Izzy was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> so you just swooped in. And I auditioned and I was like, oh, I found you! <laughs> and I landed the role and I loved it. I loved, I loved um, flying on the Manuel Theatre stage. I loved my song. I loved the feeling of being the villain because I grew up really wanting to be the villain. And not only was I a random villain, I was Maleficent, you know? So it was really fun <laughs> to play. And okay. I played her for 22 nights, you know, not just a night because a panto is a long run. Yes. So that was great. So we're going to stick with you <laughs> and come back around the table before okay. we delve into the art scene and what it's like to be a woman and what it's like to be a mum and what it's like to be all of this. Before we do that, I was, I'm sticking with the themes of <clears throat> you and your ambitions and your goals and your dreams. So you've just said there that about the opportunities. For, let's put that aside for one second. If you could have the dream opportunity 
what would it be? What would it be? There are several. I mean, currently I'm working on, on Lion King and I look at uh, with my school uh, boys and I look at Rafiki and I say, if I could play any role, it would be Rafiki, for example. And, uh, there's always, whenever I'm watching, I don't know if it happens to you guys, but whenever I'm, watch, whenever I'm watching something, I always go, who would I be? Who would I be? If it's something in Malta, it's 99% is his role. <laughs> I'm obsessed with her in case you didn't realize. Um, no, no, it's not in that sense. It's in a in a very uh, much of an admiration kind of sense. Um, I would say it's that. But as I said, I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes I, I am in the audience and I'm watching something and I say I would have killed to be in this and you you find out that auditions were never opened or even if they were I mean recently I just auditioned for five productions and I didn't land a single one and every time and now I know the artwork is about to come out and it's oh it's like uh, in Maltese we have an expression albi," because I would I I would love to be part of it sometimes I'm in the audience and I'm like I could have done that without sounding boastful don't get me wrong but I would say I could do that if I could have been given a chance to audition or if things were done justly, because mm. there is a sense of nepotism that happens here, or, but not even possibly nepotism, just uh, things that aren't done fairly, I say, but I mean, it is what it is. So you mentioned earlier, you feel very lucky and very privileged. When, you're, when I land a role, I say, thank God, because we are um, a country that has so much talent so much talent. Honestly, right now, opportunities, because there's a lot being produced, is great. But it still remains very niche. You think with all that's being produced, something I've got to land. And even so, I auditioned for five and didn't get it, and didn't get one. As as much as there is being produced, there is still a bit of a, a tight um, rope on... You're, you're answering all my questions Sorry. in one <laughs> sentence. Sorry. Sorry. I feel, I don't know if it's the same for you guys. I, obviously, they are a, a little bit, <laughs> a lot more established than I am. So it's, I think it's very different coming. I'm maybe uh, 10 years possibly 15 years younger than you or guys. Or like 20 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> possibly but, 25. <laughs> but, but it's true. And this is this this really breaks my heart because sometimes I'm asked, when are we going to see you again? What's next? And I'm like, you have no idea how much I, I wish I could tell you this is next. And I would have received four emails telling me I didn't get the role I wanted. Well, we're going to come back to that in a second, because you've just opened a massive... I don't think people talk about massive, failure as much as we should. Massive can of worms. We'll leave the worms right where they are just for a second while we finish this. Coming back to you, Izzy. You've mentioned that you couldn't pinpoint one particular role that was your highlight of your career. But if there was a role, if there was an achievement that you could pinpoint as the most desired role or production that you could be in what would it be or even just uh, the highlight of your potential career I think the the character I just played was one of them it, it's I mean I, w I have been wanting to play uh you know in a psychological thriller for years I've wanted that and I I, I feel really grateful that that's you know I was given the the role of Vanny Wilkes because it's um it's it's a character I've wanted to explore. I, I have to say it. I would have loved to do, uh, and, and it's something I still would love to do, uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Mm. You've mentioned oh. this every time yes. I've spoken to you. Oh, my God. You. That is a dream. That is a dream role. That's the dream. I don't know if there is a, a stage play for it. I'm not sure. But I think it could easily be adapted to stage. Because that what would a be, script. oh my God, that that's would be your job. You're going to have to adapt the script. But that's your dream. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> that was slightly easier. Um, Ira, now, uh, from my point of view, I'm looking at you as a singer songwriter and saying, well, Ira's, you know, the biggest name in Malta. You've been on the Granaries, you've been to Eurovision, you've done all these things. And you are still a very, very relevant artist as a, older woman and we're going to come to that in a second i mean older i'm not uh, no 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 i get it <sighs> you know when you say something and you regret, regret <laughs> saying it no no of course no i mean but what have you not done yet that you really want to do forget 
age, age and gender are relevant for a second. What is it you really want to do? I would love to delve into a musical one time. Oh my because, word! Yeah, because um, what I think there was a misconception with some people that I couldn't sing certain things. And whenever I get the opportunity to do that and to prove my point, that's that would be another highlight in my career. For example, I got the chance to sing the song which Lara Fabian sang normally, and she's like this amazing vocalist. And I always thought to myself, I really have to do that song. It was called Cuore Malato in Italian. And, uh, and when I hit those notes, because you know people think that being a pop singer is like, you don't have to have a good voice. I don't know, some people think that, I think. Um, and when I did it, you know, people were surprised. And then, like, you have to remind them again. And when I did the song with Bocelli, I can't remember what it was, what the song was called. But it was a very challenging song for a pop singer to do. And doing it kind of made me think, okay, if I want to do something a bit more challenging, I can, you know. So I'd like to do a musical one time, but not a cheesy one. <laughs> like we were mentioning before. <laughs> okay, so give me one musical that you might want to do. I think Evita would be something I'd like to do. Because I like the songs a lot. They're, they're I think, the most pop Andrew Lloyd Webber has ever written in my opinion. The most kind of current sounding. And the storyline. Who, who played Evita in yes, as well? Yes. Who played Evita in Madonna, the... but that's yeah, not yeah, why. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <there you go. laughs> I that's tell you, I if you did, if you did have to start, it would be a sellout. Of course, it would. <laughs> oh, it would be amazing. No, I would like to do that and then we do a bit of acting, but it's not what I aspire to do. I, I would just like to experience it, but I'm not. I would like to learn first, so I would love to go to all the workshops and meet with actresses and actors and. So this is not you have not arrived at the, at no, the destination. No, but it's just something You're I would like to do way. that once. You know, I don't want to like. Become a musical theatre performer. No, no, no. I would just like to experience it. I'd like to have like different experiences. I'd like to write more as well. But right now I'm in my like frustration mode of not being able to write because I've got a two-year-old at home and a six-year-old. You have just beautifully segued into my next... <laughs> segue. My, you see what I did there? <laughs> so Segwayed. I didn't fall off it and like yeah, no, roll onto okay. my head. Okay. <laughs> into my next question, because whether you're a singer-songwriter or a performing <clears throat> artist or an actress, getting on stage is the metaphorical final act of all of the preparation that goes into what you do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And bearing in mind that there's very few full-time artists in Malta, you just mentioned this as well, how on earth do you manage, and I'm going to stay with you, how do you manage performing alongside everything else that you have to fit into your life? You're a mum, mm. uh, you work, you mm -hmm. have a family, uh, and of course there is the the essence of just living. There's the the, the <laughs> regular things of, you know, <laughs> cleaning the bathroom and that sort of stuff as well. Do you, you know, the, the less glamorous. Of course, yes. So how on earth, you just mentioned this, how do you fit all of that? Like you just said, you're frustrated because you want hmm. to, to songwrite, but you've got kids. That's how the one thing I don't fit, for example, because that takes time, no? You have to sit with yourself. You have to think. You have to have the time to think. You have to have... The fire, the, the uh, grin side. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, I have that, the, the, the drive and the passion, but then the muse, you know, when that comes and like, you're like... Okay, I'm helping with Harry's homework, but I have to like record this. And then they're asking you a question. It. Whenever I like, I I'm commissioned to do something, which is not too often, but when I am, I'm like recording my voice notes and trying to sort out my logic, whatever. And the children are like, ma, ma, you know, are like screaming in the background. And then I like edit bits of vocal and there's like a scream or like a fart in the <laughs> background. <laughs> Reality. <know? laughs> And, and listen and, to your songs and in a new Howard life. And Howard's like, Emma, what's this? How, what is it? Ah, because Harry was screaming. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but like, yeah, you you know what? I think you just you just learn to do it. And you think to yourself, when I lived at my parents' house and my mom used to go, I've packed some apples and cheese for you. And you have like this, you know, juleb, whatever. And, and you're like, okay, thanks. You take it for granted. 
but it's so amazing that that happened and now you have to do it yourself <laughs> and you have like all these mental mental notes you know what you need to take with you to performances whether you're going to remember your your lines you know your lyrics using them yourself in your case exactly <laughs> and i still have the monitor in front of me and still i get it wrong <laughs> But you have to, obviously you have to make sacrifices. You are a mum. Uh-huh. What are the sacrifices that you, you have to make? And what's the reality of this? You just mentioned about, you know, pat lunches and stuff like that. But what's the no, sacrifices? I mean, I mean right. you, did it this, is, it, is it that you have to make sacrifices with family, friends? Or, or is it that your ambition in your career makes a sacrifice? Okay, look, right now, socially, I feel I'm making a sacrifice. I don't meet my friends as often. I don't... I don't go to everything I'm invited to, you know, before I used to go to the opening of an envelope. Now I don't go to anything else, really, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, right now, yes, my writing is being sacrificed. My creative um, drive is being sacrificed. You know, during COVID, I felt safe. I felt like, mm, okay, that's good. I'm pregnant, you know, no one's going to kind of do anything while I'm pregnant, very selfishly, you know. Um, but I was also very frustrated that I couldn't do anything because I had lots of work planned and I was going to do it pregnant to the lead up um, of my giving birth to Gigi. However, then when things started picking up and I realized that I'm not writing as often, it started getting to me, you know, I'll see like radio charts coming out, you know, and, and not seeing me there kind of gets to me because I know that I could write good stuff. I know I have it in me. I know I have everything in my mind. It's just having the time to sit down and vocalize it. You've, you've just said so many things in that that last kind of paragraph and it, it's making me think because you also mentioned your kids and being pregnant mm -hmm. and it's making me think to a show that we had before mm -hmm. of uh, women and, and uh, parenting and about guilt mm -hmm. and you've mentioned kind of the guilt of being a parent but also the guilt of not guilt but the 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 frustration of not being in the charts because you know that you can Yes, and sometimes thinking like you land a job or something and you doubt yourself because you think, but do I deserve this? Because have I given enough recently? You know, like never mind the 20 or so years you've been at it, but, you know, because it's a, it's a, I find that it's a job, music and the arts, it's a job where you need to stay relevant. You need to kind of always yes. give, you need to be creative. You need to get up every morning and say, I have come up with something today. And social media plays a part. You mentioned this a lot. I think that is days. the thing, you know, because I think it's, it, I feel now I, I am not in fear of that so much. There was a time when mm. I was. I think now it's okay to take time off and say, you know what? I'm just not going to be on social media at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and I'm going to survive. And I know, and I think because obviously this is a very vulnerable uh, industry, mm -hmm. an industry where you are very, very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You are putting yourself out there. You are constantly in the limelight. There is a huge chance of failure. And when you fail, you've got the people who are sad for you and the people who are really happy about it. For because sure. they think, <laughs> <Very> true. <laughs> this is our oh, finally. And they become the keyboard you know, heroes. I brought her down, you know. Uh -huh. But, totally. um, but you know, now I, I relax about it. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, there is a time where I think you need to take that break uh, so that you can have the time, number one, to live. Mm -hmm. And in your case, to enjoy your kids. Uh -huh, you are no, no, always going to be relevant, mm. era, because you are an, a unique product. Mm. Like every other mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. every other artist is unique. Nobody can replicate you. There might, obviously, new people are always going to come onto the scene. Of course. Of but course. you would bring but something But you are always going to bring something new. Mm-hmm. 
I feel in in my case, for example, because some people tell me, because now I've reached a point where I say, I don't want to be constantly going from one production to another like I used to be. Mm -hmm. I would rather do one production per year, really enjoy that, you know, be selective about what I accept Mm -hmm. and come out stronger for it because there are other avenues of my creativity that I want to explore. Mm -hmm. I am not afraid because people tell me, but aren't you afraid that people will forget you? I really don't care, to be honest. (laughs) Can I just say, yeah, Izzy, no one's going to forget you. (laughs) 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 But maybe, maybe you say, you speak about it, you say it that way because you've done so much. Yes. Because you've established I, yourself yes. so much. And, and this is one of the wonderful things that happens with age, to be honest. Because when I was younger, I would be like, no, I'd better take this on, you know, because it's it's good that I'm seen sort mm-hmm. of thing. In that phase. Mm. You know? I'm but, still there. Aha, uh-huh, but but um, I think if I had to go back and tell my younger self something, I would say <clears throat> you are always going to be relevant because believe in your talent believe in your strength because you have something that nobody else can provide mm-hmm. and it will be noted it it will be so don't be too concerned about that just keep keep doing it keep doing what you love keep enjoying what you love but also don't forget your own life Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, no, you've got so kids. That is I, so I never had kids and you have kids. And mm-hmm. that is something that you're never going to get back. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. So enjoy it, you know, embrace it. Mm-hmm. Because when you, when that phase of your life passes, you're going to bring something beautiful, something new, something beautiful, something richer. You know, mm-hmm. some people ask me, for example, they say, you know, kind of, aren't you worried sort of now that you're growing older, that maybe you're going to become kind of irrelevant? My my sort of answer to that is, F you. <laughs> <laughs> because I think, actually, I'm, I bring a lot more uh-huh, than when sure. I was younger. I, I think as an artist, I'm much more aware of my strengths mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. And I... Thankfully, we're, we're definitely, yes. I mean, this is one of the areas that I want to explore mm-hmm. in a minute, but I want to come to Tez in just yes, a second absolutely. before we move on to that, because we are none of us in our 20s. Nope. No. no. Or only one of us is in our 30s. So we're going to talk about that maturing because you've just kind of jumped ahead of the gun and <laughs> read my questions. <laughs> but before you come to Tez, in actual fact, to answer that question about relevance, I just want to go back to you, Ira. When you when you're looking at the charts, when you're looking at the Maltese mm-hmm. charts, and you don't see your song in the charts, do you ever get that twang of, you know, do I, am I still relevant? Am I still relevant because I'm not in the charts, or does it is that not bothering you? No, no, that doesn't that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is not being as active as I was before. However, I do agree with Izzy that I'd rather take on one thing a year, or maybe two. Or three <laughs> um, uh, that are good, <laughs> yes, ah, and that I enjoy doing and doing them really well, you know, like having, for example, a gate money concert, my own concert, having a big show, like um, I don't know, being asked to do a big show or being involved in a big show, and doing a TV show, for example, a big TV show, and and I'm happy with that. Before, in my 20s, I was doing a lot of these things like accepting everything, doing this, doing that, and and, 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 and being out of the house, like literally from the crack of dawn till, you know, nighttime and not having any time for myself, burning the candle at both ends. But so I feel like I've done a lot and I've accomplished a lot and I'm happy with that. And I feel like I need to spend time with my kids. But then I kind of go a bit in guilt mode when I when I'm not giving as much I feel to my creative to my music self. to my creative self but I'm frustrated as well because I want to give it and and I can't right now because I don't have like that one room where I'm unreachable because mm. even when I'm taking a shit <laughs> <laughs> they my in. kids are like <laughs> mommy <laughs> I'm telling you, everywhere. 
<laughs> ah, Penny. Did I say nice. that? Oh, this is podcast Did I heaven. just say that? You just <laughs> said that, sweetness. <laughs> there they are. Hello. And then you take on everything, sorry. Well, well I'm going to leave Erin her shit over there for a second and, and come over to you because, Tez, this is a conversation that we had and this is a conversation that led to us for sitting down around this table and talking about this in the first place. Because you, we've listed your career. We talked about your career. Your career has been fantastic. You've been relevant, but it's taken a lot of work. Think so. <laughs> now you are a mum and you're a mum of a, coming up to a one-year-old. I know. How and, that happened is beyond me, but yes. And you yourself mentioned <clears throat> that you have been now to five auditions and you had said in the past that you believed that being a mum and being in the, the role that you are at the moment was could be prohibitive to you getting roles in the theatre, which is what you really love. So I have kind of kind of picking up on on all of the points that Ira and Izzy have just said. How do you still feel relevant? How do you remain relevant? Do you feel guilt? Do you worry um, about that? And how do you manage? You've just had a production at the the, the Manual Manu Theatre. How do you manage being a teacher, being a, a wife, being a mum, and being in a theatre? Because by the time you stand on the theatre, that is what what twenty percent or fifteen percent of all of the work that's gone into that production. Um, I think the most obvious thing I'm going to mention and you're going to hear is and go, I'm obvious, but it is very, very vital. You need to have a supportive team. Yep. Uh, you need to have a good support system. If my husband weren't super okay with this and super all right with, you know, taking over Ben and the house stuff and all of this so that I can go and be part B of myself, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be able to do any of it. So I think that's very vital prior to settling down with Dave. I was in previous relationships, possibly you might have been as well, where my partners were not okay with this crazy life because you do. In my case, I I always worked full time and I did theater after Mm. my job. So you do have two, technically, when you're in production, you have two full time jobs Mm. and not everybody is okay with that. Like, like, let's put aside children for, for the minute. I had issues like this when I was still in, I wasn't even married, in relationships that were not okay with mm. you being so non-existent, mm-hmm. with you kissing another guy on stage, you know, doing, taking on certain roles, the hours, I mean, filming away from theater, mm. filming a drama takes forever, yeah, takes ages, yeah. very long. So there is that, that is number one. Number two, I... You and I had this conversation. You wanted me on board the parenting episode. And I said, let's fit in an arts episode. And then I'll come on board parenting. Blackmailed. Black. I was blackmailed. (laughs) Um, Why? Why? Because I... So I had a, I, I had a C-section and um, what, what, what is the relevance to this? There was a, an, an audition that I went to in week six and you are meant to, after C-section, you know, have six mm. weeks of Four. kind. I went on week six to make sure my mm. face is there and to be like, I had a baby, but I'm not going anywhere. Here I am. I didn't want to be Tez's mother, mm. educator, singer, <clears throat> actress. I'm going to repeat that. I didn't want to be ma- te- Tez mother, singer, actress, teacher, whatever. I wanted to be Tez. And being a mom is just something else I do. Don't get me wrong. I don't Mm -hmm. want anyone listening to this going, (gasps) I am first and foremost Ben's mom. But I'm also Dave's wife. I'm also your friend. I'm also an actress and a singer. I, I, You know, this is just, just added to my identity. And I, it is a massive frustration when I want to push against the grain of, oh, I think she had a baby, no, she's not going to be available or she's not going to want to do anything. When you don't get the opportunity to prove it, mm. it's quite frustrating when you're like, oh, I really want to be like, no, man, I want to be here. Pick me, let me show you. And then you don't <laughs> get selected. You know, it's very frustrating. And I don't think we talk about failure as much as we should be talking about failure. I mean, I literally turn my camera to Instagram and be like, another audition, I felt went really well. And unfortunately, I didn't get the role. But there is an element of, do you really want to admit that out loud that you wanted a project and you didn't get it? I don't care. I would. 
mm. which leads me on to social media as well. You post about this quite a lot, Eve, mm. that I'm sure you feel a difference mm. from when you started out to now about mm-hmm. how much you need to have a presence on social media. Unfortunately, yeah. which is why I decided to, to up it a little bit a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, we are not, not locally, but it's happening locally, but abroad. When you're applying for something, a role, a school, they actually ask you for the number of followers that you have. Mm. Why? Because let's say I am up for the role of of Jasmine and Aladdin Mm. and I am talented as well as another person next to me. And we have the look and we have the vocal range and we have the acting ability, but we're, we're both fantastic. Okay. I have 2K followers and this person has 20. Mm. They would go for the 20. Mm. Why? Because if she turns the camera and she's at rehearsal going, oh my God, on set of Aladdin. It's going to sell bombs it's gonna on It's going to sell seats. tickets. Yeah. So unfortunately, we are at production phase. It hasn't entered 100% locally because thankfully talent kind of prevails a little bit mm. better. But we are in a place where do people know her? Is that going to sell? How can I market yeah. that? Mm, we so are. Rude. That has so entered true. the production yeah. meeting mm. when they are casting of, she's good, but she will sell me more tickets. Mm. How long is my run? Mm. I need to sell more. You know, unfortunately, we are getting there, which is why you have to be a little bit more relevant onto social media. Because I said, okay, if I have the talent and I also have the numbers, then they have to select me. <laughs> kind <laughs> of thing. You know, you try and you, you want to play that game. Okay, let's play it. So I am. Um, I try and be as honest as I can on social media. I know I have young performers on there who are watching and listening, and sometimes they would go to an audition and it doesn't go as well as they hoped. They are nervous because nobody likes auditions. That's called a spade. The spade. Yeah, nobody God. goes. Woohoo! I have an audition. Um, you know, <laughs> and it, sometimes I mean you don't get the role that you want, and I think it's very important for young performers. To get used to the fact that, yes, unfortunately, there mm-hmm. is this, as much as theater gives you and that sense of satisfaction when you're there with the lights on you and how amazing it is, theater can also take a lot away. You start doubting your abilities. You, you obviously sacrifice a lot of your social life. I mean, panto, you can forget your Christmas time. You know, there's a lot that goes into theater. It's not just the high end glory of it all. It's beautiful. Yes, I can't say it's not. But it, there is a there is a lot of other things that go into it as well. Mm. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on forever about this. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> a whole bunch of things that I want to come into but I do want to just touch on this social media thing because when you were talking about social media both Ira and Izzy were ming away really (laughs) really coming back with a big mm -mm. so before we go any further you talked about failure on social media and social media algorithms which only reflect human algorithms let's face it algorithms are not anything new algorithms have been around for millennia Beautiful women get more attention than us women who are maybe not catwalk models, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that is the truth. And that's how algorithms on social media work. And failure doesn't necessarily get the retention that success does. But you've just mentioned that it's very important. So we're going to sidetrack the conversation just for a second, then come back to the next question in a moment. But you mentioned about failure and you, you pointed at ERA about when we're talking about social media and you talked about the relevance of being realistic. So from a personal point of view, not relating necessarily to the arts, but you all have presence on socials. Ira, you have a huge presence on socials. More on Facebook than Insta. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to be honest, relevant and to fail? I feel it's very important for me to be honest, honest with my followers, honest about why I haven't posted stories about every single little thing that I've done throughout the day on my Instagram, for example. Um, And I am honest. I'll say I just didn't have time or I'm not feeling in the right frame of mind right now or I have nothing to say. So why the hell should I say, you know, like the sky is blue? (laughs) 
And I mean, and stop, like to stop kind of faking that, you know, my life is so amazing and all this shit. But bearing in mind that that whole thing, <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> Love her, but, but, but like genuinely, <laughs> because it's so, it's so real and, and there's no bullshit. You know, she's very like, I'm sorry, my priorities were elsewhere right now. Exactly. And that no, is no, that. I, I tried exactly. to be I'm back. I'm probably on the loo and here I am. <laughs> Exactly. Posting a photo Posting, I took three yeah. days ago because that's Miss Gina, the only chance she has. Yeah. But uh, I mean, as a mom and a, a performer as well, I read her posts and I'm like, oh, her, her chronicles are something else. She's quite interesting, I must admit. Ha! Right back at you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm going to ask you, Izzy, because, <clears throat> because putting it in the context of not just your career, but also, <clears throat> how can I put this? As a woman like myself, who have been around before the era of social media, do you not ever feel completely and utterly lethargic or just very sceptical about social media, but you know that you have to engage? I don't really feel that pressure anymore. I, I think now I just think, you know what, if there's a week where I just want to have a private, normal life and not post how wonderful everything is and I'm really having a great time and I'm so special and all this crap. <laughs> I'm just going to say, you know, I mean, I don't, I really don't have a huge following, you know. So, I, I, and I'm more popular on Facebook because it tends to be more pop popular in Malta, you know. I'm, I'm much more um, sort of relevant there, so to speak. I can't say I'm really worried about it. I think I have enough for me. Uh, and that's really what I'm concerned about. I don't have aspirations to become some big, fancy superstar. I'm happy with my life as it is. <laughs> I don't need to have world fame, you know, <laughs> and, and show, I don't know, you know, the, the color of my crap this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this episode. <laughs> loving it. Uh, can you imagine Beyonce <laughs> doing that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just took a shit. <laughs> I'm posting. As you know, I mean, it's a bit ridiculous sometimes. You know, you know, like for example, after you, after I do a show, I'm absolutely exhausted, <laughs> exhausted, and I have just taken a selfie in the morning. You know, as I'm about to have coffee and think, you know, this is me in all my <laughs> shitty glory. You know, this is reality, people out there. <laughs> you know, life isn't this. Big, you know, filtered. Everybody's always looking wonderful. They go to bed with makeup and come, you know, and wake up in the morning with makeup. I look like shit, basically, <laughs> after a production, you know. <laughs> Hello, this is me. If you don't like it, uh, just, you know, keep In fairness, keep in misery, you didn't look that great either. <laughs> You have to be specific, yes. Not show. Sure. You did look a bit crap. No, I look crap after all the shows, basically, because I'm exhausted after the shows. So. We're gonna we're gonna move on from this whole poo if somehow this just <laughs> we're, 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 we're sticking to the theme here. We started the poo. Started <laughs> the <theme. laughs> An unexpected turn for the she word. And I'm gonna come to something that you said. You said a minute ago about being older and still being relevant. And I want to come back to this because each of us are in different life situations right now. And we've sort of already touched on this, but but you said, Tez, your challenge at the moment is that you are a new mum. You want to stay relevant. <clears throat> Izzy, you know, we're we're not spring chickens. I'm not insinuating anything. Um, and Ira, you're in your 40s now, mm -hmm. which which, if you believe media, is when as a pop star, you would be kind of not relevant anymore. Although mm -hmm. having said that, Madonna is your idol and she's still going. <laughs> so you guys at this table define the norm as women in the arts. You define the norm as women in any genre because you are still relevant and you're still feeling relevant. Is that the truth? Do you ever feel challenged about the fact that, you know, age is going to happen. Age is, is, is not something any of us can bypass. Do you feel that you have to work to still be relevant? Do you feel that women should just 
forget about age and just get the heck on with it because we're all living a little bit older. Coming to you, Izzy, first, because you're the oldest of you three. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. First of all, let me just say, I really don't have a problem. I'm really happy to be the age I am. I don't want to be 20. You know, I'm happy with being 54, basically. But if you look like you do, I don't believe no, you. We're all going to say, <laughs> you look down fine. And I just say, Izzy, <laughs> except for... Liars. Except for- <laughs> Oh, not true. at all. I'm not. A, I'm not. Anyway, at all. I have true. no problem with my age. I mean, I, I think I'm a bit of a rebel in that <laughs> sense because I don't care. You know, I know I have wrinkles. I know I don't look like I, I was when I was twenty, and I don't have a problem with it because I'm fifty-four, and I think I look like a person who is fifty-four. <laughs> And it you you don't. Me. I mean, first of all, you don't look like a lady who's well, it fifty-four, doesn't matter. except in misery. Ah. In misery, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did look awful, <laughs> and that's okay because you're meant to. But but in the context of, <laughs> also in the context of your passion of your love in theatre, do you think that there's going to be a point that you come to where you're going to question your relevance in the theatre? Because, and and are there still parts that are available? How do you how do you hone those parts? How do you create those parts I that think... are relevant for you? Well, I think, to be honest, um, as I grew older, I got much more interesting roles, much more interesting roles, Um, you know, playing somebody like Shirley Valentine when I was in my 40s. That was a really beautiful role to play because it was such a relevant role for somebody, you know, I think a lot of both women and men uh, had those feelings, played, played that role, could identify rather with that role. Um, I've played really interesting characters the older I grew because I wasn't typecast anymore as, you know, the sassy, you know, little blonde bimbo kind of, you know, who just struts her stuff on stage. It became more interesting. Let's put it this way. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's nothing more liberating than being a bimbo on stage. Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Except for Annie Wilkes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so every age had something amazing to offer. It unlocked other roles. Exactly. So, so growing older, um, I, I, I still feel relevant. And to be honest, now at this point in my life, I think the only thing that matters is the way I feel. So I don't need to do anything for somebody else. Like sometimes I do get people who, let's say, have followed my career, uh, the very few people who follow my career. Um, you know, I do get people come up to me and say, oh my God, you know, like you really looked awful. <laughs> Annie Wilkes is one of them, you know? And I'm like, thank you, because that was the character I was exploring. I didn't want to look, you know, I wasn't going to go on there with stilettos and, and all dressed to the nines because that was the character I was I was exploring and I was enjoying that. So I think there's less vanity as you grow older mm-hmm. and there's more about enjoying what you're doing and not having to fit into any one particular role. Don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm vain. Yes, there is a side of me that is vain. But when I'm on stage, let's say when I'm acting, I want to fit into the role that I've been cast in period. Mm. I don't care. There are some plays I do. Mostly I do plays for myself, for my own gratification. I'm not really worried about whether people will enjoy it or not, if I'm honest. I just Mm. want to be authentic in that role. Some people might like it. Some people might not like it. It's not relevant to me anymore. I... I I think in my life, I've enjoyed every single stage of my life. I think I'm here now. I'm going to make the most of it. This is what, you know, these are the parameters that there are, and I'm I'm just going to go for it. So I, I think that the older I grow, I think there's, my life is sort of richer. My artistic side, my cre- creative side becomes more and more rich basically that's the way I feel I think I have you know with all the knowledge with all the experience that you get I think you become a much richer person as this you is age. the dichotomy that we explored in a show women and age and that as you get older you become more experienced and as you've just 
so beautifully and eloquently expressed that freedom that you you feel as you get older and the freedom to not conform and choose for yourself. Now, before we come to Tez, who's the youngest at the table, I'm going to come to mm-hmm. the Madonna of Malta because <laughs> no, don't call me that, I'm just <laughs> kidding. But, but for a second, uh. I am going to refer to Madonna because Madonna is in her 70s and she is yeah. still pushing it and she is still choosing to make herself relevant. Now, she's getting a lot of flack for that. Yes, that's what I was going to say. She's being heavily scrutinized for it. And I do believe that in my line of work, it's a bit it's a bit different. Absolutely. Because unfortunately, fortunately for some, but unfortunately, image plays a huge part of being a pop artist. Um, uh, I do believe that uh, someone like Madonna gets scrutinized for it because she's still trying to push the agenda of, you know, when when she looked a certain way. I have no problem with it, but um, some people do, you know, and I have received quite a few ages remarks online um which i refuse to i refuse to answer how like um enough someone said like ah look in nanna malti you know uh, nanna tal musica malti i'm like oh, wait, yeah, yeah. if i'm a nanna then what the <laughs> hell is <laughs> like I, I don't want to mention anyone so that i'm not offensive <laughs> but what are they like ancient or something <laughs> people who are older than me um, so I have, but they're calling you a nana. But you get that flack because people want sometimes want you out of the way to make way for others. But it's it's really silly in reality because everyone is different, like you so totally and, and rightly pointed out. And you know? in a way, kind of the the issue I have with Madonna and her <clears> image <throat> now is because in a way she is sort of rebelling about the ageist mm-hmm. society, but. Then she's conforming to it, like mm, completely, mm, mm, mm. you know, change. Sort of, she's kind of trying to act like a person who's, you know, in the early twenties. Uh-huh. When why? Uh, because you have so much. I mean, she is one of the artists whom I really admire. Mm-hmm. I, I thought she's her career was amazing because she broke so many boundaries. But now, why? Why? It's like you pandering to their wants, to the uh-huh. wants of these ageist and sexist idiots in a way the the relevance i feel of pop artists like yourself you appeal to a much much wider audience than people in my um, Mm -hmm. sector right and i think in a way you should um defy those those issues by by in a way, if you feel you don't want to conform, mm. then don't conform and say, you know, mm. it. this mm. is me <laughs> and I'm still bloody relevant. And I honestly feel that if you feel something, I mean, take, for example, people like Vivian Westwood. Okay, mm. she was in fashion, but my God, till the day she died, she was Fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she didn't bother with plastic surgery and mm-hmm. try to look. She was herself. She was her own person. And this these are the, these are the women I uh-huh. tend to admire. Be your own person. Yes, damn it. You know, we've got rinkers, we've got saggy <laughs> bums, saggy bo- <laughs> Who cares? You know, this is us. Wait, when you see men, oh my god, he's a silver fox. Isn't he cute? Uh, no, no, it's true. It's like, come on, guys. We have where artists are they going to? Yeah. Um, who are embracing it. Recently, yes. I watched the film. Ma, I forgot her name. But, you know, you've got people like Judy it. Dench, and you've got, okay, they're again in the acting world. But, but I really admire people like that because they are fearless mm-hmm. and they are saying, you know what? We're women. We age just like men do. Get over it. (laughs) Ira, your industry, you what you do is Uh probably as we mentioned before, more subjective to ageism than mm-hmm. any other industry that I can even think of, mm-hmm. maybe with the exception of modeling. Mm-hmm. But your thoughts on this, as you get older, what are your thoughts about 
about no, I mean, moving through the industry? Look, most definitely, I agree that the older you get, the more mature you're going to become as an artist. And I think there's it's there's something very special about that because in music and in the arts, I feel that experience and seeing the world with new eyes, with fresh eyes every single time gives you the opportunity to write new stuff and to be more creative um, and to give something different to the before. You know, now I'm going to write in a different way, in a different manner. And there's a huge, like, not resurgence because they've always been there, these women, like Pink, is in her 40s as it's well, amazing. you know? Um, Elisa, um, uh, the Italian singer, is in her 40s. Laura Pausini is in her 40s. The women everywhere around the world in their 40s, you know, really making good music and re- are still really relevant. So for me, someone who comes up to me and says, you know, I think you should scoot over and make way for others is ridiculous because there's place for everyone. Everyone's different and I think it's the goods you bring to the table. It's not how old you are. It's not how you look. Like I said before, okay, in my industry, looks do play a part, I think, because there's a certain aesthetic that marries well with a certain music. But that's slowly being broken down as well. I mean, Madonna is a case of her own because, you know, she's slightly older. She's always sold sex. She's always sold image. Um, But... I'm sure that if she came up with an album that was slightly different to everything else she's ever made, you know, people would tap into that. So maybe... You just hit the nail right on the head. The largest selling art female artist in the UK for consecutive years is Adele. Mm-hmm. Adele is neither skinny nor is she in her 20s. Mm-hmm. And yet she is groundbreaking. Yeah. And surely that is positive of course, but because her, her music is amazing, her product is amazing, you know? I think if you're, if you're a great artist, if you produce great stuff, then people will follow you. I mean, um, we've seen also, what's her name? The, the woman who used to sing Withering Heights. Um, Kate Bush. Uh-huh. Kate Bush. Yes. Kate Bush landed her first global number one at the age of, what, 60-something? Yep. Because her song was featured on Stranger Things, and... Cheryl Crow started late as well, but there exactly. are a couple of art late. I even saying it, it doesn't sound nice. Who defines? Who are we to what say late, what late exactly. is or when you should start? No, exactly. that's, that's, that's and I nice. think, yes, art is something that doesn't age. No, Art is art. Creativity is creativity. Irrelevant of the age. You could be 100 years old <laughs> and you could still be producing <laughs> amazing art. Mm-hmm. It, it's, we have to stop pandering to this ridiculous thing you know that's, uh, that's this, this mm. mold exactly that's the word you know this, this stupid mold that a woman is is only relevant if she's young mm-hmm. but or, this is such uh-huh. a misogynist uh, <laughs> <to> ideal <laughs> you know no women age just like men do and w- i feel that the more a woman ages it's like wine to say to say a mm-hmm. cliche I but agree. they become so much richer so much more interesting, both men and women. It doesn't, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but age makes you a much more interesting person. Just embrace your creativity because that is what is relevant. We're all going to die. We're all going to get, you know, ugly and old and wrinkly <laughs> and die. But, but your art and your your relevance we'll as an on. artist will we'll live forever. Mm-hmm. You know? I have to say this conversation has been um, surprising um, <laughs> and incredibly empowering because we have a woman who's in her 50s, her 40s and her 30s all making waves in your own industry. And I want to close by asking you to wrap up your, your <clears throat> thoughts into a closing thought for this show. And I'm going to start with you, Ira, for you, for what you do. If you could speak out, let's put it this way. If you could speak out to your younger self and tell your younger self a wisdom, what would it be? I would definitely tell myself that you're not the center of your universe. I've learned that now. Um, I would tell myself to always believe in myself I would tell myself the same things that I kind of say all the time. Never forget where you're coming from. Never forget who helped you to get there ever, ever. And uh, to always dream big, you know. I Like you said, art lives forever and creativity lives forever. And so do dreams. You can still dream big at any age. 
even while you have a family, you know. For now, I'm still in like my kind of you're going to bed quicksand <laughs> for now. But um, but no, it will get there. I I I would. I want to speak to myself now, actually, not my younger self, and tell myself that, you know, this time is a time to be savored and a time to be lived with as much exuberance and and life as possible. And um, to, to kind of know that I've done this before and I will do it again. You're not getting rid of me, guys. And even Sorry. better, <laughs> you're going to do it. <laughs> Well, to either your current <laughs> self or to your younger self. <laughs> to my younger self and to my current self and to anybody who's <laughs> listening right now, I would say embrace every moment of <clears throat> your life because it's really precious and stop worrying about and stop comparing yourself to people. What you have is unique. Nobody in the whole wide world can ever replicate what you are. So be aware, at least try to be aware of your strengths, focus on those, and you're going to be amazing. Just just embrace that and stop worrying about all this rubbish that's all around you. Just focus <laughs> on yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Tess, um, you're the youngest of the group. What would uh, yeah. you, you don't need to speak to your older self, but you can speak to <laughs> I, I'd like to pass two remarks before we end. First of all, I feel quite lucky that um, I'm, I'm in an industry where, you know, I have people like, you know, these lovely ladies. <laughs> and even when I watch certain things, certain films, like recently we were talking about this one by Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet, and they're very much embracing age and and reality i'm very much in favor of stop filtering stuff and stop you know let's just you know th- th- there are there are one of jlos in the world mm-hmm. but the reality is that we look like kate winslet and uh, emma thompson you know if we're lucky if we're lucky but you know <laughs> but they were they are very adamant that no you don't edit this no this is what i look and uh, this is what i look like and i find that um hopeful as somebody who is a- aging so to speak towards that I hope there is more of that and less filtering and less um unrealistic m- models to look up to um rather than my younger self I would like to speak to the younger performers who are watching this and listening to this um there are going to be moments in your career wherever you are in your career I am definitely not where I I want to do a lot more I wish I did a lot more. I am somewhere in the middle right now. But there are going to be moments where you question your abilities and you you doubt if you're any good and you question if, okay, why didn't I get that? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? And I want you, when I look directly into the camera, I want you to know that you're enough. And as these lovely ladies said, you are relevant and you are unique and you are important. And I know in the midst of the negativity around things at certain points, you can forget that you are important and that you are unique and you are enough, but to really, really believe that you are because somewhere, somewhere you fit in. And I thankfully fit in 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 the art scene, whereas when I was younger, I really felt like I didn't. There's a moment on stage, you will understand what I mean, where you say, ah, where you feel the lights on your skin and you feel... You're in the right place. Mm. And there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And you have to hold on to that feeling. And you have to believe that you're going to feel that feeling again. And to that, I'm going to say cheers. <laughs> cheers. Chin <Thank> chin. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And thank you.